Hey guys, I'm Master Greg. Welcome back to the Taekwondo Upgrade. Uh, today we're talking about Israel Adesanya, the last style better. Man, what a fantastic system this guy is. He's such a tremendous athlete all around. Uh, between his, you know, kickboxing and glory, his UFC. Man, he, he's just really, really the creme de la creme of what most people are shooting for. But I think a lot of people don't truly understand the systems in place that he uses to be successful. You know, a lot of times when I see these breakdowns, I've, I've watched a bunch of them, and there's a ton of breakdowns on this guy because he's such a dynamic striker that he's exciting, right? And what happens a lot of times is when they break it down, they go, well, he's gonna throw this jab and it's gonna cause them to parry. And as they parry, he's gonna throw a counter head kick. Or, you know, he's gonna throw this jab, get in their face, and as they back up, he leg kicks. It's too many if then situations for him. This is not how his mind works, in my opinion. What instead happens is he has a general system of feints and he just kind of looks for them to respond accordingly and exploits it. So let's break down what he does in his system and how you can apply that towards your own system. Um, I will tell you from my experience, man, last week I was playing with this and I combined it with some of the systems we were talking about before with Machida and Wonderboy. And this stuff blends together so well and so easily that my striking game went up by leaps and bounds. Everything felt super easy. It was almost like that perfect storm where I could pick at him at will and anytime they threw something at me, I could easily evade it and never get hit. It was like that perfect dream in martial arts that we're all striving for. I'm not saying that's what's going to be the case every time. My point is that when you start talking about implementing these systems into your game, you're going to notice a huge impact right away. It, it, especially if you're a fairly advanced striker already, you're going to notice your game going up by leaps and bounds. So let's talk about what he does. Okay, first of all, hands are low. The reason for that is that he wants no telegraphing, right? So everybody knows that from right here, as I throw this, you know, strong rotation, it's, it's very powerful, but it's also telegraphed. So what he's doing instead is he's keeping his hands low and relying on head movement and footwork to evade instead. And what he's doing is as he comes in here, because his head's a little bit forward, if they do throw something, he's going to have this strong lean back and he's going to simultaneously step back. So he's going to roll back and step back at the same time to give him a lot of space and easily evade stuff. Um, he's also very good at roll unders, which is also going to help make this all possible. So head movement and footwork are the key to the defense on this if you're going to keep your hands low like this. Uh, it's very much modeled after that Anderson Silva style of fighting where the hands are low because you can't see what's coming. Because from right here, it's almost just like a flick out with the hands as opposed to this strong, powerful kind of telegraph motion. And that's what he wants. He wants no telegraph in everything that he does because he wants to constantly be deceptive, keep them guessing, and it's like playing the flinch game where you're not sure what's coming, right? Right. And what happens is as they do this, they're constantly under this storm of uh, sensory overload and it makes it hard for them to see something when it actually happens because what you've done is you've taken away their early recognition and left them with only a late response when they've already moved and they've already exposed themselves. Just like Machida and Wonderboy, you're looking for a situation where their guard can't be in all places at once, right? So you're looking for them to expose just a part of their guard to deal with what's coming out because they're not sure. And as their hands move and their head moves and their body moves, you're looking for where they're now weak. And what you're going to do is you're going to create triggers that have caused them to respond to things and you're going to set and break patterns. We talked about this before. And man, Israel Adesanya is great at this, setting and breaking the pattern. He's also very good at setting and breaking timing. And that's what we're going to talk about here. So without further ado, he comes in here. Hands are low. When he enters into space, he does this kind of head bob forward step, right? It almost looks like a chicken as he's coming in, right? The head's moving, and there's a reason for that. This head motion is the first of his feints, right? He wants them constantly thinking, is a punch coming at me, right? Is a jab coming? Is a cross coming? What's coming? Is my kick coming? He's going to add in hip rotation and shoulder rotation in this sometimes. But the first part of this is just stepping in with his head bob. As he does so, he's gonna step just in a range and what he's looking for is for them to throw something so he can evade back with that head movement and counter punch, right? He's here, pow, pow. You'll see him do this a lot. Here's the fun thing about it though. If they don't, then he attacks. What, and this is what he wants. He wants them to be unsure whether it's safe to throw that counter punch and when they don't, pow, pow, he throws. Right? And he does a lot of, see how like I came up here, I fed it with the left and then I threw the right. You're not sure what's coming. And that's a really key part of this strategy is never letting them be sure what's coming. As soon as they think they've got you figured out, 
I'm gonna fake the jab, fake the jab, cross, fake the jab, action jab, just straight in jab. You're, so you play with that timing, like I said, he's got a lot of these pauses he throws too, where one of the things you'll see him do a lot with his lead hand, he uses the left to make them unsure what's coming. Sometimes they're faints, sometimes they're committed, sometimes he look, they look like they're faints, he stops and then he continues through. That break in timing is a really valuable tool that he uses. He does it also in his kicking, you'll see him do this a lot. You know, every time, everybody who spars knows that there's moments where you go to throw a kick, the moment's not right, right? You can feel it. You start to throw a kick, and you're like, eh, that guy's gonna block this. Not even a point in throwing it, right? I'm opening myself, let's not do it. He does one better. He gets to here, he goes, ah, you're blocking. Ah, change it up, right? I'm gonna go here, you start to go high, ha, ah, I'm gonna go leg kick. You'll see him do this where he drags the leg back, waits for you to change, and catches you. Very, very uh, interesting strategy where he takes what you already expect as that moment where you don't feel like it's right and uses it against you because now you feel like, oh, okay, I've thwarted this. But instead, he's only pausing before he continues through. Really, really awesome strategy. Okay, you'll see him do a lot of rear hip feints, a lot of shoulder feints, a lot of lead hand feints, right? Everything is constantly moving as he moves in to draw a response. And as he does so, he's gonna start switching it up. He's gonna throw jabs, like I said, broken timing. The place, and then throw. You see him do this a lot in kickboxing, where this hand stays out here because the big gloves, he wants to block that visor. Right, he, he wants to block your vision so you can't see what's coming. It's very similar to like, Lomachenko will do this, where he'll come in here and he'll block your vision as he attacks. Um, I don't know a lot of his stuff. I'm just starting to learn it. But anyway, so he does that a lot of this. Get in your face and then throw something out. Um, it's nice because it's a nice range finder. You have a very clear uh, placement for where you're at. Sometimes he does his hands out, which fingers out, which gets him in trouble. But everybody does. Anyway, so he uses the lead hand to set up another attack. He'll change up his height a lot of times. So this rear leg could be... That rear calf kick. He'll throw that a couple times. And once you start getting used to that, bah, bah, right? Think. Change up the timing. And then a double kick. And then lead leg. Right? See where I'm going with this? And so what he does is he constantly mixes it up. So you're not sure. And then you get used to the kick. And he throws that cross. And you see how it all tandems together? It's not a lot of attacks he throws. He basically throws jab, cross, roundhouse kick. This is the majority of his attacks. And you go, well, what about all this flat, fancy stuff I see him do? I see him throw turning wheel kicks. I throw him, I'm not gonna, well, I'll give it a try. I'm not sure if this is my thing. He'll throw this capoeira thing sometimes. Ha! You know, it's kind of fun. He'll throw flashy stuff. Um, all this stuff is a magic trick, okay? There's a couple reasons he does it. One, turning things in, like, Adding in spinning elbows and stuff, where he'll be in here. This stuff is really important because he needs to mix it up so you're never sure what's coming. But the whole point of it is to get you off of his main game and keep you second guessing if that's what's really happening. He'll do the same thing with the turning wheel kick. You know, right? He'll throw this stuff just to mix up. The other thing that he does is he does flash, right? He does this fun stuff. It's dancing, it's exciting, but here's the thing. When he does this stuff, he's doing it for a reason. We talked about uh, last time when we did Machido, how a lot of times when there's a break in the action, you know, somebody fixes a mouthpiece or something like that, as soon as they restart, bah, he's right in there. Ah, Stylebender does the same thing, but he creates those situations with Flash. They go, oh, he's just playing around, bah, bah, but he's not. He uses that to create a break where you lull yourself into a sense of complacency, like you've got a second to break off and stuff, but he doesn't. That's when he attacks. Um, another thing he'll do, he does a lot of stance switching. Stance switching exists for a reason. Um, one, he's very comfortable fighting out of both sides, and a lot of guys are not. He's just comfortable fighting out of his southpaw, doing the same tactics, because everything is easy. His jab and his cross are the same. Pop, right? Pop. It doesn't matter which foot is forward. So he uses this to an advantage. One is to mess guys up because it's harder to predict what's coming at him. And the other thing is that when he switches, sometimes he'll change up his strikes on that. 
He throws his jab. Ha! He throws what was his jab. He goes here. Now you're thinking it. Ha! Now he switches to a jab. You know what I'm going with this? Every time that you think you've got him broken down, he changes it just a little bit. And the key to this is setting a pattern, right? Keeping him guessing, setting a pattern. Ha! Right? That type of stuff. I jab, I fake jab, and I cross. And then, ha! Timing change. Leg kick. Double kick. Oh, moment's not right. See how this all blends together? When you can put this together, whew, it is very hard to deal with. So, these are kind of the keys to what he's doing for his feint game. This is really, if you're gonna take anything away from this is what I want you to take away and start playing with. Constantly feinting and you're striking to keep them guessing. Now let's throw in a couple things that he does that help him to do this. He's got a couple advantages. One is he's naturally very tall for his weight. That range, you'll see this in kickboxing. He uses this range part, remember we talked about blocking that visor. It's like, you remember those things where like you hold a little kid and they're swinging at you and you know what I mean? You can kind of hit him at will, same thing. He uses this here because his range is longer and he knows it. So he can plant on them, but if they try to do it, even if they do cover the gap, it's easy for him to move back. Uh, John Jones has the same advantage. You know, being tall and lanky is an advantage. Um, I'd much rather fight a strong fighter than a tall fighter any day. Tall fighters are, man, they're nasty. So he will use the length to his advantage. Um, for this system, you have to have really good head movement. A couple of things that he'll do defensively is when guys start coming at him, You'll see him do this a lot. Once again, extending that arm, keeping that head out, and creating that space. It's the rollback with footwork, adding in this. You also see him doing that step back. If you go back to the previous video where we talk about uh, distance management, head control, and stuff like that, um, I think it was in the head movement video we talked about this. Now. One of the things you could do is, as you're evading back, doing this double step back. Um, and, and so the advantage of that is so that you don't end up turning your back you just kind of continue to evade. Another thing he'll do is he does a lot of roll unders, and man, he is deadly with these. That head movement is really critical to his game. You cannot keep your hands hanging low unless that head movement and footwork is in place. If you can pull it off, more power to you. Um, I can do it, but it's 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 dangerous, right? There is a risk. He does eat a lot of shots from it because of it. But what you'll notice is that a lot of the shots he eats, like jabs and stuff like that, these straight punches. He leans back to take the edge off, and what he does is as they get confident with that, pow, he throws a hook. He's not guys out with that. It's a very, very effective strategy where he comes back, he's just on a ring, pow, and he throws these hooks. He'll also, as you're throwing it, because he's constantly rolling under, his head movement is aggressive. As soon as he sees you coming in, he's already moving his head. And a lot of times that roll under will facilitate his counter cross. So rollbacks, roll unders. Um, he does slip, but he's already moving his head anyway. You know, being proactive in your head work does help with that. And very much the same way that Tony Ferguson does, where his head's constantly in action. Israel Adesanya does a lot of the same thing. And it's part of the faint system, so it helps keep him safe too. Pop. Um, he does have a very strong takedown defense. And his ground game's pretty good too. But you have to if you're going to play the system. Because they're going to get impatient sometimes and try to take you down. Here's the advantage of the system though. He knows that eventually it's coming. So he can wait for it, pick him apart. And then as soon as they come in, he's immediately ready to sprawl and defend, okay? That takedown defense is a huge, huge part of what allows him to do this. If you cannot defend a takedown, you can't play the system. It's as simple as that. You gotta play a different game. Wonder Boy style might be a little better, but even still, I mean, really you should have a takedown defense anyway regardless of what kind of striker you are. So if you're not sure how to do that, go back, watch my uh, previous videos on sprawling and single leg takedown defense. Learn how to do an over under, stuff like that. Um, let's see, um, like I said, he'll evade back, pressure hooks, uh, he'll roll under, counter cross. Um, I think that's really the majority of it. But like I said, if there's anything I want you to take away from it, it's that faint system. So start playing with it in your game. You know, come in here, Try to draw stuff out, come back in and counter, you know, move that hip, 
change your timing, change your elevation, all this stuff. But constantly keep them guessing with this flinch game, okay? Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Go play with this. Try it out in your system. Let me know how it goes. I'm really interested in your feedback. Thanks, guys.